Hey, what is going on, Twintendo Nation? I hope you're having an awesome day. And today I've got a Pokemon Go video for you guys. Now, it feels like it's been a while since I actually made a Pokemon Go video. I think the last one I actually uploaded on my birthday, so thank you very much to everyone who did wish me a happy birthday on that video. It really means a lot to me. Now, this Pokemon Go video is going to be slightly different to all the rest. Normally, I'm just covering the news, and it's going to be a while till we get some, I think, until the end of March when the beta is released in Japan so this is just going to be a bit of a fun video kind of speculating where the legendaries could be located in the real world. Now because this Pokemon Go video is a bit different to what I normally do I wasn't too sure whether people would like it as much so I've only gone up to the Hoenn legendaries if you want me to cover the rest of the legendaries I'll do a part 2. Now personally I'm not a big fan of part 1 and part 2 videos I think if you're making a video it might as well have everything in it but I did want to test the waters for you guys see if this video is okay and it's to your liking and I'll just do part 2 afterwards. But anyway, let's jump straight into this list and start off with Articuno. Now for Articuno, I've chosen Mount Everest as its location. Now before anyone freaks out, I do realise that no Pokemon Go players will go up Mount Everest. I really highly doubt that. And probably there won't be any signal there, but it's just, you know, like I said, it's a fun video. Just speculating where, you know, legendaries could be. And it would make it a bit more legendary to put Articuno so far out of reach. Now for you guys who don't know much about Mount Everest, it is the Earth's highest mountain at 8,848 meters. It's insane. And it, it would make Articuno feel like a legendary if you did have to get up there. Now if we were being a bit more realistic, Articuno would probably be somewhere in the Alps, I'd say. So for those, you know, freaking out thinking, you know, this ain't realistic, you know, it's just a bit of fun, as I've said. But anyway guys, let's move on to Zapdos's location. And for this, I have chosen the Matterhorn in Switzerland. Now I know what a lot of you guys are thinking, you're probably thinking the Matterhorn looks a bit too cold for Zapdos to be living there, and I think that's more than fair enough, it does look a bit too cold for Zapdos. Now the reason I have chosen the Matterhorn over power plants is because I'm actually basing Zapdos' location on the Mystery Dungeon games. So if you've ever played the first Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games, Blue and Red Rescue Team, there is a place called Mount Thunder, it's a really really jagged mountain, and I think that's what the Matterhorn reminded me of. And that's why I picked it. I can just imagine a Zapdos perched on top of that. I don't know why. And it's easy to imagine when it's in summer, guys, when there's less snow. I will say that. So the Mount Thunder does look like the Matterhorn to me. And it is a really cool mountain, the Matterhorn. Really, really jagged and sharp. And apparently it's one of the hardest to climb in the world. And no surprises there. So that would be really cool to have Zapdos up there. But anyway, let's move on to the final legendary bird, which is Moltres. And for Moltres, I have chosen Mount Vesuvius in Italy. Now if you've studied geography at school, you'll probably have heard of Mount Vesuvius before. It's the only active volcano in mainland Europe, and I think it'd be a really good location for Moltres. It's actually a tourist destination which you can go to, unlike, well I mean Mount Everest you can go to, and the Matterhorn you can, but they're very difficult to get to. However, Mount Vesuvius is quite a popular tourist location, so it's quite easily accessible by coach or boss. So I think it'd be a really nice location for Moltres to be. So that's why I've chosen Mount Vesuvius. By the way guys, if you do agree or disagree with anything I have to say in this video, definitely comment down below. I want to hear your guys' opinions. You know, there's no right or wrong really. This is just a bit of fun to discuss about where legendaries could be in Pokemon Go. But anyway, let's move on to the next legendary. And this is going to be Mewtwo. Now, this one's going to be kind of interesting. I've seen a lot of people mention this before. For Mewtwo, I've gone for Chernobyl. Now Chernobyl is based in central Ukraine and is infamous for the famous meltdown it had in 1986 which led to a massive, massive outpouring of radiation. Now you can actually have tours in Chernobyl now so I don't think the radiation is as bad as what it was but it does say to avoid vegetation and stick to the roads otherwise you know you might get radiation poisoning. Now we don't know how this would actually affect Mewtwo the radiation, I think it would probably be okay let's be honest it's Mewtwo. And we've already seen Mewtwo in Times Square, so again, we don't know how legendaries are really going to work, whether they're just going to appear in every major city. But like I said, this is a fun video, and I think it would be nice to see a Pokemon that's been abandoned by society, in kind of a city, really, that's, again, been abandoned by society, due to other reasons, though, just due to a massive radiation outpouring. So I think that would be a really cool location for Mewtwo. It'd just be like an abandoned city for him to just live and chill. And uh, yeah, that's why I chose Chernobyl. And I think a lot of people will agree with that because I've seen a lot of comments before about Mewtwo and Chernobyl. But anyway, guys, let's move on to Mew. When this one's a no-brainer, really. And I've picked Guyana as Mew's location. Why Guyana, you ask, maybe? Well, this is actually Mew's location in the games and the anime. So in the Pokemon games in the first Generation 1 games, according to the Pokemon Mansion journals, 
Guyana is the location of the jungle where Mew was discovered. So Guyana is, as I've said, an actual country in the real world. So I'd probably put Mew somewhere in a rainforest in Guyana. I think that'd be a nice location, as you guys could probably imagine. And uh, yeah, so I think that's pretty cool, that one, how it really does tie to the real world. But anyway, we're going to move on to the Johto legendaries now. And we're going to start off with the legendary beasts. I've actually put them in one location, as you kind of see in Heart Gold and Soul Silver when they are in one location. Although they do roam around, this kind of does make sense. And I'll explain it to you now. So I put them in Kinkakuji in Kyoto, Japan. So why are they all bunched together? Well, if you remember Heart Gold and Soul Silver, you do find them at the start in the Burnt Tower. They're all at the bottom of the basement. And there is a link between Kinkakuji and the Burnt Tower. Firstly, King Kakuji, although it does look like a place for Hoa with it being gold and having a gold crested bird on top, it actually got burnt down in 1950 and this is what inspired the burn tower in Pokemon and so that's why I'm putting the legendary dogs at this shrine because that's where they were found at the start of Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Like I said, they do roam but you know, I could just say, you know, they're roaming around Kyoto. Again, that's an option but I think the burn tower, which is obviously King Kakuji, would work better. But anyway, let's move on to the next legendary and we're going to go with Lugia. Now originally I had Lugia being somewhere else, you'll find out late in the video because another Pokemon has now taken that. But for this I put Lugia at Niagara Falls just because it does remind me of the big waterfall that Lugia does come out of in Soul Silver. There isn't really much more than that I can really say about it. It is a really nice location, again a popular tourist location, that'd be really cool for a Pokemon event for just Lugia to come out of the waterfall. I say come out obviously, you know, in terms of the virtual phone aspect, not actually just literally fly out the waterfall as cool as that would be. But yeah, that's where I'd put Lugia. You guys can let me know in the comments down below where you think Lugia should be, Niagara Falls or not, because I am a bit undecided on that one. As I said, there was another option. But anyway, let's move on to Ho-Ho, and for Ho-Ho, I've chosen the Toji Temple in Kyoto. Now, if you do remember the Bell Tower in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, this is actually what the Bell Tower is based off, as you can probably recognise, and this is also where you verse ho -Oh. Now, as you've seen from the last few legendaries, there's quite a few locations that are based in Japan, and I did try to avoid that, really, you know, I want to go for that global feeling, because Pokemon is a Japanese game, I did want to spread them out a bit, but because Johto is really based off the Kyoto region of Japan, it just wouldn't make sense to put them anywhere else. So I did try my best, guys. But yeah, I think if you did go to Kyoto, you'd be getting a lot of legendary Pokemon. But anyway, let's move on to the next legendary, and that is Celebi. Now for Celebi, I've gone for another shrine in Kyoto, and this one is called the Daigoji Temple. And it looks really, really nice. It's a small red shrine in the bamboo forest in Kyoto. And yeah, it just looks really, really nice. And it's very similar to the shrine in Ilex Forest in Heart Gold and Soul Silver and Gold and Silver where you find Celebi. Anyway, let's move on to the Hoenn legendaries. Now these are pretty interesting. So for Latios and Latias, I did originally say they were gonna be traveling between airports because obviously they do kind of roam about and they just kind of remind me of jets. But I did remember that in the fifth Pokemon movie, Pokemon Heroes, they're watching over a city called Altamar, which is basically based off Venice. It's based off a few other cities, but mainly Venice, I'd say. So for that reason, I've chosen Latios and Latias to be located in Venice. Really nice location, does seem very similar to the Pokemon Heroes location. And yeah, I just think it's a perfect fit for them, kind of just speeding through the canals. I just think it's really cool. So that's my choice, for Latios and Latias. Let me know in the comments what yours are for them, because again, I was a bit undecided on those two. But next up, we're going to move on to the legendary titans, Regice, Regirock, and Regiseal. So for Regice, I have gone for a place in Iceland called Skaftafell. Now, Skaftafell is a national park in Iceland. It looks amazing. And there's also these really cool ice caves, which I could really imagine Regice being located in. I just think it's a perfect location. But enough of Regice. Let's move on to Regirock. And for Regirock, I have chosen the Negev Desert in Israel. Now, the reason I've chosen Israel of all places is because... The legendary titans Regirock, Regice and Regiseal are based off the Jewish folklore of golems. Now Israel is basically a sacred site for Jews and so I thought like going with the Jewish folklore and they do have a desert in the Negev desert which I'm pretty sure Route 111 in Hoenn is probably based off. That's why I went for Regirock being around Israel somewhere like that. So that's just my opinion guys. Let me know in the comments what you think about Regirock. And next on we're going to move on to Registeel and this one is just, I couldn't think of a really good location. So for Registeel, I've chosen my city, which is Sheffield, because we're really, really famous for steel making. So Sheffield is known as the Steel City. Our hockey team are called the Steelers. 
One of our football team is called The Blades, basically, again, you know, about steel. And I just couldn't think of a better location. I think it is world famous for steel making. So I just thought I'd stick Reggie Steel right in my city. Basically means I'm calling dibs on Reggie Steel. So, uh, yeah, again, if you've got any other ideas for Reggie Steel's location, let me know in the comments below. Now, let's move on to Groudon. And for Groudon, I've chosen pretty much the most active volcano in the world and this is Urta Eyal in Ethiopia. This thing is amazing, it looks incredible. From the footage I actually remember seeing in geography back when I was like a teenager, it looks amazing and it just seems like a perfect location for Groudon to be. A really deep magma pit and it's just so intense and incredible that I just could imagine, you know, something as powerful as Groudon being located there. So I've chosen Urta Ale in Ethiopia as Groudon's location. Definitely check it up if you get a chance after this video. It's an amazing place. Anyway, let's move on to Kyoga and I've chosen Mariana Trench for Kyoga's location. Now this was actually going to be Lugia's location because I think there's Silver Trench in Mystery Dungeon. I'm pretty sure that's where Lugia is based in one of them. So I thought, oh, okay, fair enough. There's a trench. We'll put Lugia there. But it does suit Kyoga more just because I can imagine Kyoga going down to the deep depths of the sea more than Lugia. I think Lugia is a really good swimmer and stuff, but wouldn't go that far down. But, you know, that's just my opinion. I thought Kyoga would definitely be more suited than Lugia. Anyway, let's move on to Rayquaza, and I've chosen the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. Now, the reason I've chosen this, well, it's pretty obvious. It's the tallest building in the world, and it's kind of similar to Sky Tower, if you see what I mean. It's just, I think it's like a quarter mile high, something ridiculously impressive. It looks amazing, by the way. It looks incredible. So I could imagine Rayquaza being up there, and it just kind of suits it, really. I don't know. I can imagine it wrapping around the Burj Khalifa. It just, yeah, it just suits it perfectly, really. I think it's a, a good location. Anyway, next up with Jirachi, I've actually got two locations. This is one I couldn't decide, so I'll let you guys decide in the comments. So first off, we've got Waitomo Glowworm Caves. Kind of reminds me of a starry cave, and this is actually in New Zealand, by the way. Looks really impressive, and it just reminds me of somewhere that, you know, Jirachi might hibernate. Looks like Star Cave, as we've seen. I think there's Wish Cave, actually, in Mystery Dungeon. It probably reminds me a bit of that as well. But yeah, it just looks like a Jirachi location. Now, there's also a place in China called Wulingyan, I think it's called. Apologies if I mispronounce that. But anyway, the location in the Jirachi film is actually based off that area in China. As you can see through the similarities, it does look very similar. So again, Jirachi could be hibernating somewhere in China. I'll let you guys decide. I think I do prefer the Glowworm Caves, but the one in China does make more sense. Anyway, we're going to move on to our final legendary, and this is Deoxys. And for Deoxys, I've chosen Area 51. I mean, you know, it's an alien Pokemon. It does make sense. Mewtwo would also be, you know, kind of a, a good fit here, but I just thought Deoxys would probably make a bit more sense. So, again, you know, it is a bit silly because obviously you can't get to Area 51. You wouldn't be able to catch it. So, like I said, just a bit of fun, this video. So, if you do want me to do part two, let me know. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. So, if you did enjoy this a fun video, definitely drop a like. I'd really, really appreciate it. If you want to stay up to date with all things Pokemon Go and Pokemon Sun and Moon related, definitely hit the subscribe button down below. And yeah, that's pretty much it guys, so I hope you have an awesome day, and I will see you on the next video. Peace!